if you haven't had an opportunity to watch Dracula and Toad, stop listening now, major spoilers, here we go. 10 out of 10 stars. For me right now, Dracula Untold is the 2014 movie of the year. I loved everything that they did with this um, reboot, remake, however you want to describe it, <laughs> however you want to label this thing. The director, Gary Shore. Epic. Epic, epic, epic. Great job editing, directing, acting. I mean, I think he had a really great cast. And the story was simple, okay? If anybody out there that's listening is not familiar with uh, Vlad the Impaler, Dracula, vampires, um, for me, Dracula is the original monster. He is the <laughs> he, he's the beginning of of I guess every every kid's nightmares. Let's just put it that way. Um, if you're familiar with uh, Nosferatu, I think they had a little bit of um, nods and hints towards him because they called this one vampire in there the Master Vampire, and that's how I always described, and the, and that's how I always knew um, Nosferatu was the original vampire, like the one that you know everyone feared, like the first vampire. Okay, what I loved about Dracula Untold um, was the origin story that that's what we went in to watch this movie it was like yo it's going to be an origin story what are they going to give us well here we go let's talk about what they gave us what they gave us inside of dracula untold was i guess the first time that you can actually see and feel what a vampire goes through when they change into a vampire, okay? Or what a human goes to through when they change into a vampire. Um, after the human dies, the vampire, you know, takes over the, the, the vessel, and then you get to experience um, heightened senses with uh, hearing, um, sight, and also, um, I guess you could say heat vision, almost like the predator a little bit. <laughs> Pretty much, man. Vampire capabilities are Kryptonian. Let's just put it that way, okay? And that was the whole premise of this whole reboot and this origin was hope. And I know it's kind of crazy to to root for Dracula and, you know, Dracula's supposed to be the bad guy, but in this one, they kind of gave you a backstory and origin story to, to Dracula um, that you can, I guess you could say, identify a little bit with. You kind of feel a little bit of compassion for him you you want him to win at the end of this movie man um throughout this movie you're rooting for him you're like you know don't go this way go this way you know don't do this do that so anyway uh luke evans man if you're not familiar with luke evans um go and watch uh the hobbit desolation of smog go and watch um the hobbit the battle of five armies um you'll see bard and then you'll know that it's it's him okay that's that's who we're talking about. Um, Luke Evans is also from, from I guess from say um, infamous man for um, uh, the Immortals, and that starred uh, Henry Cavill, um, you know, aka Man of Steel, and that's kind of why I like how everything kind of tied in because he starred in the Immortals in 2011. Dracula and Toad came in 2014, and it's just fascinating to see how I guess similar, you know, these two guys, you know, their roles are, you know, Man of Steel was about hope, Dracula and Toad is about hope, they both starred in The Immortals, it's just pretty fascinating, man, um, you can also see him in, um, The Fast and the Furious, and then also The Crow, that was just recently announced, I know you guys know what that is, um, anyway, getting back to this, uh, you have, uh, Luke Evans, who plays, uh, Vlad, aka Vlad the Impaler, and, uh, he has a, uh, a wife, um, played by Sarah, uh, Gadden, and um, her name is Marina, and what ends up happening is there's a little bit of history involved, okay? And we're not going to get into that, I'm just going to kind of give you an idea. There's a war going on inside of the world, and this ruler that is, I guess, taking over all of these dynasties and empires, and he's crushing people, he wants to take Luke Evans' child, from him and place him into, I guess you can say like a, a children's, um, 
uh, war warrior unit, okay? Almost like a, something out of 300, okay? Where you take the child out of uh, his environment, place him into um, a situation where he has to survive, and then this child will be the ultimate warrior. Um, no pun intended. <laughs> Once you understand the backstory of Vlad the Impaler, Vlad the Impaler, he had to go through this process um, previously because of his father and his father's father. It was like a generation of them bowing down to this this king, this lord, this this war god, okay? And whenever uh, Vlad gets the opportunity to save um, his children and a hundred or two hundred or a thousand or nine hundred and ninety nine more children that are going to be placed in the same situation, which is pretty bad because they beat the kids. They pretty much beat them into submission to where they are. They're, I guess you say, killers hired, um, hired killers that will never, ever um, miss their mark. They won't talk back. They won't argue. They're just robots. OK, let's just put it that way. You get a situation where um, Vlad's wife, uh, Miria, as she says, you know, you promised me that, you know, we're going to have a better life now that you're prince of, of our people. You know, you said this would never happen. Protect my child. And that's what Vlad does, man. Now, what they do is they they, they kind of show you a small sample of, of Vlad the Impaler and a little bit of his history through just text on the screen, um, a couple of those CGI shots, which are, which are absolutely amazing. But Vlad the Impaler is retired. He's a family man. It's just Vlad. And he's just chilling with uh, his wife and his uh, son. And, you know, they're living the best life ever. Um, riches and, and all that good stuff. Drinking wine and eating uh, bread and uh, and hogs and all that good stuff that they ate back then. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on. Pause, pause. Hold on. So, now that you have the retired Vlad the Impaler, he comes out of retirement, he kills this king, this warrior, this war god, whatever you want to call him, he kills his men, and then after that, he seeks vengeance um, um, upon the people. Um, and what ends up happening, the, the word gets back that Vlad did this, and now the, um, the king is going to march on his, on his uh, people. Now, let me back up a couple seconds, because we're not going to keep everything in unison or anything like that. Um, what ends up happening? The war god finds out that some of his men have been killed inside of Vlad the Impaler's area, his territory. And what ends up happening is that <laughs> they blame Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler, who wasn't retired, had nothing to do with it. He tries to explain this. No one wants to listen to reason. He tries to give them coins. No one wants to take the coins. Or they take the coins, but they say, you know what? I want the coins and the children. And matter of fact, while we're on top of this, let's go ahead and take your child too. So they insult him, he kills the men, um, but backing up to that, the soldiers that were killed, or supposedly that Vlad had killed, they were killed by this monster inside of this, the, the side of a mountain, okay? And I think the, the mountain was called uh, Saber Tooth, Sweet Tooth, Hungry Tooth, something Tooth Mountain, and... Uh, <laughs> We go inside this this uh, cave, and this is the first time that you get to see uh, Dracula vision. You get to see um, what it looks like as a, as a vampire hunts you, and it's pretty fascinating. It's 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 um kind of stepped up from Aliens, Predator, um, Man of Steel's um, um, heat vision, or not not Man of Steel's heat vision, but his X-ray vision. It's all those combined meshed into one, and what you see is you see white. Um, then you see like a pulse and then you see the blood that's circulating through the, uh, person's, um, um, through the victim, I guess you could say, or the, or the, <laughs> or the piece of flesh that you're hunting. You get to see the, the blood circulating. That's what you see through that, through that Dracula vision. And then after that, we find out that, uh, Vlad, in order to save his people, he needs to call upon strength or he needs, uh, some sort of hope. And that's the only thing that saves um, Vlad from being killed by the master vampire played by Charles Dance, a.k.a. Yes, yes, the Lannister father off of Game of Thrones. And believe me, man, it's it's pretty fascinating to see this guy work. It, it, I just His acting is just really, really amazing, and he does a really good job. 
And um, once, you know, the Master Vampire sees that Dracula has hope inside of him, he uh, says, you know, drink from this cup after, as, as he cuts his finger open, he drips his blood inside, drink from this and become Dracula. He becomes Dracula. And then after that, you just see him controlling all the environments, running fast. As he runs fast, he bursts into a, about, let's say, 200, 300, maybe a thousand bats. And that's how he travels, man. It's pretty fascinating, man. Okay, I, I can't even describe it any more than that, say more than that. But you got to go see the movie. I'm going to continue on with part two. If you want to listen to that, we'll go more in depth and we'll talk about the fighting. And we'll talk about um, the amazing ending. And um, also the post-credit um, scene to where, I'm not going to lie, if they make a sequel of this movie, I'll be first in line. And I'm not going to lie about this either. Batman v Superman, any comic book movie, they'll have competition because of this movie, man. Right here, guys. Thanks again for watching. Let me know what you thought about Dracula. Comment, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. I couldn't do this without you, and I really appreciate it, man.